Welcome back to the news at 10. Well, the president, Goodluck Jonathan, has directed the release of the full report of the forensic probe into the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation accounts. Well, the audit was carried out by PricewaterhouseCoopers and the report was submitted to President Goodluck Jonathan last February. In taking the decision to make the report public, the presidency says that Dr. Jonathan is deeply concerned by the suggestions that his administration has something to do with the alleged missing $20 billion. And to lay the matters to rest, the president, in line with Section 7, Subsection 2 of the NNPC Act, has decided that the full report of the, N of the PWC forensic audit of the NNPC be released immediately to the public so that all Nigerians will be properly informed on the matter. The whistle for the uh, missing funds was blown in 2013 by the then CBN governor, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, but the Senate Committee on Finance cleared the Petroleum Minister after their investigations. And moving on to other stories now, following recent comments by President-elect General Muhammadu Buhari to probe the $20 billion missing oil revenue, there is palpable fear in the petroleum circle over this very matter. In our next report, though, our energy correspondent, Olu Phillips, chronicles the allegations by former CBN governor, the probes to unveil the, the mysteries. From the books and as much as a sense of history allows, the president-elect has always talked tough when it matters for him the most. In few weeks, he'll officially take on the saddle. When he does, it appears he'll be revisiting allegations made by the suspended CBN governor, Malam Sanisi Lamido Sanisi, over unremitted oil revenue, whether $49.9 billion, $20 billion, or $12 billion. Okay, let's remind ourselves the journey so far and how it all started. On September 25, 2013, the former CBN governor wrote Mr. President Dr. Goodluck Kabele Jonathan alleging that between January 2012 and July 2013, NMPC lifted 504 million to the 4,107 barrels of crude oil valued at $65 billion, but remitted only $15 billion, representing 24%, and that the corporation is yet to repatriate to the federation account an amount in excess of $49.8 billion, or 76%. That statement coming from the fierce and tough-talking SLS bank. A trail of reaction followed. The presidency receives his letter, forward same to the group managing director NMPC, so that by October 4th of same year, the presidency received detailed explanation that presumably laid to rest the issues. Somehow, in December 2013, the former CBN governor's letter filtered through the wires, causing the Senate to direct its committee on finance to investigate the $49.8 billion missing oil money. Also, in December 2013, an interagency committee went to work comprising Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget Office of the Federation, CBN, NMPC, FIRS and the DPR. From their findings, the coordinating minister of the economy announced that $39 billion of the alleged $49.8 billion has been remitted. Another twist in turn came up on December 18, 2013, at the first sitting of the Ahmed Markafi led committee, where the former CBN governor Malam Sanusi scaled down the missing funds to $12 billion, while the coordinating minister of the economy claimed $10.8 billion. By February 2014, Malam Sanusi moved again. This time, he alleged $20 billion is what is unremitted. Following further Senate Finance Committee investigation, the NMPC was reported to have remitted all funds meant for a remittal into the Federation account. March 28, 2014, the committee submitted its report to the Senate, observing that no oil revenue amounting to $49.8 billion or $20 billion $12 billion, or for that matter, $10.8 billion, as alleged by the former CBN governor, was missing. The report was debated at plenary in July 10, 2014, where most recommendations were adopted, similarly dismissing allegations of any missing oil money. Price Water Corpus forensic audit report on February 2, 2015, 
like the Senate Committee on Finance probe, stated in parts that all revenue generated from the federal government's crude lifting for the period of 1st of January 2012 to 31st July 2013 amounted to $69.3 billion was fully accounted for. For 15 months, it was back and forth with conflicting figures from the former CBN governor and committees probing this movement. Perhaps it should be safe to say that all seem to have been laid to rest in February of this year with no reports of indictments for the corporation, nor further empirical evidences to support further allegations. But suffice it to say that the incoming government is considering resurrecting the episode that when it happens, should be an interesting series. Olu Phillips, Channels Television News. And to throw more light on the uh, missing $20 billion dollar uh, NNPC funds. I'm being joined on the news at 10 by an energy expert, Mr. Olabode Shoumi. I want to thank you so much indeed for joining us at this time. Thank now, you, uh, good uh, this has been on and off for a while now, and we understand that uh, uh, there are some uh, allegations to, to the uh, outgoing al administration, and President Jonathan has come out to say that I want this to come out in the open so everyone can see. Uh, but uh, by and large, what does this mean for the corporation? I think it's important to note, first and fundamentally, that this is an NMPC issue. And um, when it's an NMPC issue, I think the responses needs to come from NMPC. Uh, having said that, uh, when they say an investigation is going to be carried out, they did not say a winch hunt, which means that they are going to explore the possibilities of both uh, them being guilty and them being innocent. It is important for everyone who is crying for blood or everyone who is crying for innocence to know that it can go both ways. Mm. What that means more importantly is that we as Nigerians must be interested in justice and not vengeance. The law has a way of taking mm. care of itself. Again, um, the report was investigated by PricewaterhouseCoopers. This is an international firm of over 100 years that operates in 140 countries. They have a reputation, and when they speak, governments listen, businesses listen. They have put their stamp on it, saying that mm. this report is no. true to the so extent. Now, what is significant about that is that Pricewaterhouse is a partnership. It's not a limited liability company. If for any reason it is proven that though that is not true, that means their partners are liable, haven't put their uh, stamp on it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that given the sensitivity of such um, an event that anybody would just want to put their well, name well, on it. Why do you from. think though that this statement is coming out again? It has been on since 2013, uh, prompting the president to say, okay, we're going to make this come out uh, out to the open. Is this coming in good enough time? Well, I mean, I cannot speak on behalf of the president and I cannot second guess what is in his mind. Just in the same way, I cannot second guess what is in the president elect's mind for saying that they want to look into the report. But what is important as stakeholders in the industry is that we want the industry to move forward. There is no oil and gas company that has not significantly reduced their budget of operations this year whether it is the IOCs, whether it is the little ones. There's a lot of expectation that has come in from the end of the elections. We cannot say, and we should not say, that investigations should not be made should they see a need to it. But what we are saying is that there's a need for the industry to grow and for the industry to improve. And that will be a place where a lot of attention will be focused on by industry players. Mm. So what, why did it take this government this long then to to come out to the open? Well, like again, I, I cannot speak for the government, but based on the chronicles that have been set forth, I mean, the, the issues has gone forth back and forth. The government has um, had press releases, they've released documents, mm. and I think the height of it was bringing Pricewaterhouse Coopers into the free for them to, um, so to speak, give an independent audit as different from the audit that will come from the Auditor General and to put a stamp of um, credibility and a stamp of independence on it. If the incoming government believes that that is not satisfactory, it is their prerogative to do the needful.
but if that will be what will make the industry move forward, it um, remains to be seen. What What are your thoughts on uh, the the uh, this probe that uh, Buhari says that he's going ahead with? Does this in any way distract the uh, focus of what the administration is uh, is is saying their promises to the people? Well, you know. <laughs> I would have thought that there are agencies who are statutorily implied, I mean, uh, empowered to do that. I, in as much as uh, for some time there will be um, excitement, it will be like an opiate to the masses that certain criminals are being caught, mm -hmm. if they are being caught, uh, it may not necessarily transform the economy, it may not necessarily mm -hmm. help the energy industry, and at some point in time, the chickens will come home to roost. I want to thank you so much indeed, Olabode Shomi, an energy expert, for speaking with us and, uh, of course, for giving us your thoughts on the news at 10. Thank you. Many thanks indeed. Moving on now, the chairman of the Nigeria Electricity Commission, Dr. Sam Amadi, has appealed to generating and distribution companies in the power sector to invest in coal, solar, and other sources of power to save Nigeria from epileptic electricity supply. Well, Dr. Ahmadi told journalists in Abuja after a meeting with electricity consumers, advocacy groups, on how to improve the quality of consumer participation in decision-making process in the sector. Well, according to him, the forum is aimed at amplifying the voice of consumers as other stakeholders take critical decisions regarding electricity generation, distribution and billing. This meeting between the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission and the Consumer Advocacy Group is aimed at strengthening the consumer's voice in the power sector. The chairman of the commission, Dr. Sam Amadi, says the lack of an organized consumer network has created a deficiency in the system to the disadvantage of consumers. We're the first to sign up to the Freedom Information Law, which means that we are open to make all the disclosures, proactive disclosures that the law allows us, and anybody who asks for information from NEC receives it. So these are procedures to create open, transparent, and accountable regulatory regime. But all this will not avail much if consumers are not engaged, organized, and actively helping to balance outcome for all stakeholders. This is, however, not the only challenge facing the sector at the moment. Mr. Ahmadi also advocates an embedded power generation and distribution system to save the country of her electricity woes. We hope that the next two, three years, Azura will come in, ExxonMobil and some other generators will come in. But above all, that's why we have started the embedded generation regulation, to allow for small modular power, renewables, so, so, solar. We've licensed solar, wind farms, so that if you put 40 megawatts here, 40 in Kano, 40 but cumulatively, you create more megawatts before in the next two, three years, we begin to see much addition coming from the grid. So our solution for the acute shortage is embedded power. Some consumer groups here, however, believe that solving issues regarding metering and billing is the best take-off point for resolving the crisis in the electricity sector. What the consumer wanted from anybody now in Nigeria? Meet hours. By the time you meet hours, we now tailor our consumption to our pocket. All this switch of your light, no switch of your light, will not come. The regulatory body has seen the need to get uh, stakeholders involved in decision making and then to carry everybody along. And not um, maybe the regulators or the operators having a field day. Nigeria currently generates and distributes between 2,500 and 3,000 megawatts of electricity, a capacity that is grossly inadequate for the country's population of over 160 million people. When the Nisa 10 returns, three dead as pedestrian bridge collapses in Kano State. Do join us again. <laughs>